Prophet Isaiah foretold, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Amidst prophecy of war and destruction, gloom and darkness, Isaiah gives a prophecy about a coming Messiah, an anointed one, a descendant of David, who would be anointed in Jerusalem as Messiah, a Messiah. There is hope, for a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. A wonderful promise of hope that brings light into the darkness. With this light, God's love can be seen more clearly. The purpose of humankind can be seen more clearly. For with light we can see what is, and the shadows no longer bring us fear. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Yes, as this hope, the Prince of Peace, the Messiah will establish and uphold God's kingdom with justice and goodness, not just now, but forevermore. For the people of Israel, a new day is dawning. The sun is coming, and for you and for me, a new day is dawning. The Prince of Peace is bringing the light. The Messiah is the light. Would you expect to be the mother of the Messiah, this Prince of Peace? Surely the parents would be prominent people, people of influence, but our God is a God of surprises. So God chose a young teen named Mary from Nazareth, a small village off the beaten path, tucked between hills. There the humble meets the divine, an encounter that will forever change this young teen's heart. God sent an angel Gabriel to this Galilean town to share news with the chosen one. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was perplexed and wondered what this angel meant. The angel Gabriel continued, Mary, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Now the message exploded from a glorious angelic encounter to life-changing news. Mary was to conceive and bear a son who will be named Jesus. He will be great, the son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of David. How long will he reign over the house of Jacob? Forever. Imagine the shock for Mary. She wondered, how can this be? I am a virgin. With God, nothing is impossible. The angel explained how the divine would come to earth. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The child will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Do you see? The light is coming. God is using his creation to bring about a new world. Can you feel the hope? The dawn is breaking. The light is coming. The coming of the Messiah, the light, did not arrive in a royal palace with trumpets. Rather, it began with an engaged couple. Mary and Joseph heading to their ancestors' home of Bethlehem because Joseph was from the line of David. The Roman Emperor, Augustus, wanted the subjects of his empire to be counted, to be taxed. It was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So Joseph and Mary, who was pregnant, journeyed from Nazareth to the small town of Bethlehem. So there they were, out of towners, expecting a baby and looking for a place to stay. But there was no room for them in the end. Imagine the urgency, the uncertainty. Imagine the concern of a young mother needing a safe place to bring her baby into the world. Imagine the pressure felt by Joseph to provide a place for his wife and child. Where will this anointed one be born? Why has God chosen us to guide this young one to be the Messiah? It came time for her to deliver her firstborn son, this expected Prince of Peace, the Messiah. 
And into the darkness came a tiny baby's cry, a cry that lifted praise to a father God, a cry that called out to earthly parents. A baby now swaddled in bands of cloth, lying in a manger, was here to show love, to save the people. Imagine two parents seeing for the first time the face of God here on earth in a small, insignificant town by world standards, the light bursting forth through the night was born. Just as they had every night. Sheep would easily stray and find themselves in danger. A watchful shepherd was a must. A divine encounter brought forth the glory of the Lord. Light filled the sky and the shepherds were filled with fear. The angel reassured them as Gabriel had reassured Mary. Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. Today to you is born in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And if that encounter wasn't enough, the one angel was joined with many more angels, singing and praising God. The shepherds heard them sing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Imagine what was running through these shepherds' minds. Did they really just witness a heavenly choir? Had God chosen them to see the Messiah, the Anointed One? These keepers of the sheep would run with haste to be the first visitors of the true shepherd. They hurried to Bethlehem and found the family of three, just as the angels described. They amazed Mary and Joseph with the story of their heavenly news encounter. Mary continued to treasure their words and ponder them in her heart. As for the shepherds, they went back to their fields, changed now for they had seen the promised one. Think about it. This baby who was lying in a feeding trough would someday be the bread of life, offering sustenance of light and love. The newborn prince of peace, wise men in the east, studied a new light in the sky. They were students of signs, signs that point to events of great significance. Students of stars and constellations, these men believed a new star pointed to a new king being born. If they followed the star, would they find the new king? What gifts would they bring to a king beneath such a dazzling star? What would you bring to a newborn king? They chose three gifts, not typical gifts for an infant, but ones befitting for a king. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, a spice used in embalming. Somehow, these magi had insight into the spiritual mission of this new king. Why would these non-Jews make such preparations and journey to see an infant king? Their minds and hearts were illumined. Here we see the light of the world already drawing people in to reach all the nations. They followed the star to Jerusalem, where they encountered King Herod. Where is the king of the Jews who has been born? We have seen his star in the east. We have come to worship him. Bethlehem. The wise men were then led by the star to where the true light was. And they got down, gave him the gifts, and worshipped him. God spoke to them in a dream, warning them not to return to Herod. So they returned to their own country by another road. Are you ready to watch for the signs God may send you? Are you prepared to journey to follow the light? The one who was found by Magi following a bright light was the light, the light of the world for the people who have walked in darkness. He came to illuminate lives with grace and love. His words and actions pointed others the way to God, the source of all love and goodness. He drew crowds of people yearning to hear a message that sounded like no other, a message of hope, forgiveness and peace, justice and reconciliation, a message of unconditional love. For thousands of years, God had been reaching out to his people through patriarchs and prophets, 
But now this, this one was different because this one was the son of God here on earth to show us God's face. When he spoke, they were God's words. When he healed, it was God's healing. When he preached, it was God's sermon. And his words to the crowds did not end with, I am the light of the world, but rather he passed on that light of love and hope. He encouraged us, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. He speaks that same message to you today. You are a light to shine in the darkness. For those walking in darkness who so desperately need their path to be illuminated with goodness and mercy, with hope and forgiveness, with love, you are the light for those people. Do you know people who need this light? Are you ready to shine? Let's shine. Shine this Christmas and beyond. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.